All right. Um, today, I'm going to tie um, fly. I call the Murdo minnow. Uh, it's just a bait fish pattern. Um, kind of takes a couple of my favorite smallmouth flies, like the Bardo minnow and the Murdich minnow. Uh, combines them, adds a different material or two, um, just to maybe try to fix any uh, material tangling that happens on one of the other ones or, or both of the other ones. Um, this is one of my my go to go to smallmouth patterns for sure. You can kind of see. Hopefully, you guys can see the UV in the uh, foxy brush. Um, the sparkle throughout the head, like it, it just really it pauses so nice in the water and uh, and just gets a really great dance. Anybody who goes in my boat, you will either see fish or have heard of fish that we've caught on this thing. It's it's ridiculous. You can catch anything on it too. It's a saltwater hook. Um, you can tie it in multiple different colors. Um, this one uh, closely resembles our our bait fish. Um, up in northern Wisconsin, which is a, a huge, a huge part of what our smallmouth eat throughout the spring and middle of the summer. Sometimes, uh, usually spring and early summer, though, you can find this on one of the rods in my boat. So, um, and I play around with it a little bit too. So I've got the, the regular old shad color. Um, we've got like a fire tiger version of it um, with blue orange and chartreuse and then you just mark her up with a pen um, it's really it's a great fly so let's uh let's go ahead and tie it uh, we're gonna start off with the orvis 9034 uh, saltwater hook um, you could also use uh, a tmco 811s uh, I didn't have a package down here. It wasn't like I was looking at notes. Um, so anyways, uh, it's just your regular old saltwater hook. Get that guy in your vise. Um, the key to this fly, or at least the key that I think to any good smallmouth fly that's going to be in predator water, um, like pike and musky and other stuff that is a huge reason why either flies are lost or flies get just shredded after a short period of time is they're just not tied um, maybe strong enough or maybe with the right materials um, I use GSP 250 denier um, thread on this fly you're gonna start it uh, about an eighth of an inch back give her a couple of spins a lot of times this thread will have a tendency of sliding so just make sure um, before you go all out with it that you got it tied in really good. I take it all the way back uh, to the curve of the hook here. And I'll cut that off. So as you see on here, I started here about an eighth of an inch back. Went all the way back to the curve or just shy of the curve. The next material that we're going to use on this fly is going to be a white bucktail. Um, maybe about a third to a quarter uh, diameter of a pencil is how much you want to be the bunch. Um, you don't want it to be real crazy. This is uh, this is it compared to a chapstick thing here. Um, I use the chapstick as dubbing wax sometimes, so. That's why it's here. It's not an advertisement for Sims. Although, I think it's nice. Um, so bring your thread back up so you're about uh, a half inch or so away from the eye of the hook. Um, I try to eye these up here. I want it to be about twice as the tail to be twice as long as the hook. Um, so that's where I, I cut that guy. And then I tie in this deer hair tail and I just kind of hold it lash it down hold it in place you're gonna go back over this a few times so don't worry about not having enough thread wraps on there um, so now 
where I tied this in, my first deer, my first wrap on the deer tail is, is right here at the tips. So that way I don't have to trim any of it off. My first wrap on the next material, which is Icelandic sheep, is going to be back um, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. What I want to do is I want to make all these materials make a slope so that when I go to tie the last materials in for the head, it makes that nice, that nice cone effect. So right about there is where I want that. Again, uh, Icelandic sheep, maybe you can come up with something better. Um, I personally think that Icelandic sheep is a pretty great material for this particular fly. I realize in a lot of other flies it has a tendency of bunching up um, and, and becoming just a big knot when you're stripping it, but it works really good on this. On this you're going to want to take about the diameter of half of a pencil. The reason I say that is because Icelandic sheep has so much undercoat that once you move your fingers forward and pull out all this under fur that comes through, you'll be you'll be right down. It'll be a lot lot thinner. Um, and then here's the tips of my deer tail. I'm looking at the camera over here too to make sure it's actually being visible. And I just want to make these just a just a hair longer. Actually, I'm going to cut that nice and flush. Set her on top. One nice loose wrap to kind of grab everything. And then get her held down. And then come back out about halfway back out that Icelandic sheep. Um, our next step is going to be a pearl flashaboo. Um, sometimes I use uh, olive. Uh, just kind of depends on what the end product needs to look like. Um, cut off about eight to ten strands of this this pearl. Grab it about two inches below the top of where you cut it there, and just. Give a couple of these guys just a little tug down below to kind of stagger, stagger how they're going to end when you're pulling them through the water. Because you don't want it just to be a flat tail. You want it to stagger out. All right. And your last little bit of flash here, you're going to use silver. Um, again, if you're... If you're in a place, let's let's do eight to ten. But if you're uh, in a place where uh, minnows are copper colored, put copper on there. If you're in a place where they're olive colored, put olive on there. If they're yellow, put yellow on there. It's just uh, fly tying. A lot of the times, I think gets uh, creativity is lost, and that's a shame because it's a pretty creative thing to do. If you didn't want to be creative, there's support your local fly shop. Uh, tie them up, make them a little, little bit of yourself sometimes. Um, so this last, last thing, I, the flash boo gets itself all wound around and, and goes crazy. So a lot of times I'll just get my fingers wet so that way it sticks to the tail. Um, another thing that a lot of people, uh, I see them fighting with material or whatnot when they're tying flies or doing big dubbing loops, I use this little teeny tiny hair clip. And you can take that, pull everything back, and just hook it right there. Keep stuff from moving around. If uh, it's an intricate head or something, you can, you can clamp a bunch of that material down right over the head. It works great. It's super cheap. Uh, so there. Next step, you're going to want to take just a tiny little piece of rabbit zonker. Um, I use red or fuchsia to act as a, uh, a gill. And you just want to cut maybe a, oh, that's a little much, but you want to cut about a quarter of an inch or so little piece and just put that right on the bottom of the body here 
um, you're going to tie over quite a bit of the leather. You don't want it to extend down the hook too much, but you do want that red flare to come out there right, you know, right at the bend of the hook. So um, go ahead and tie that guy on. This should be what you're looking at. So your next step, there's only two more materials left now. One is uh, Estaz. I use Pearl on this fly. Um, again, for my my area or our area, since it is public lands. So just kind of secure that guy on there and then the last material that you're going to add to this is going to be um, I use a cream color foxy brush they have little teeny tiny little bits of UV all the way out too which is really nice I cut them in half um, foxy brushes I think there's six six in there so you cut them in half you got a dozen flies um, so if you're curious about how many flies you get out of one of those um, you'll see I guess it's you it's really easy to over bulk on, on the foxy brush you don't need to do that um, so then wrap your thread all the way back forward once you get those two ingredients tied on there you're gonna leave it again about an eighth of an inch back um, to help kind of make that taper of the head as you're coming forward so you're gonna want to use the take the estaz and wrap it I kind of I call it skipping a beat but I leave enough room to put another layer of Estaz down in between if I wanted to um, just because you're gonna put that foxy brush over some of it's gonna get held down some of it's gonna stand up um, and some of it the foxy brush will just fill in so you don't even you don't even need uh, to worry about it and kind of wrap yourself right up to the head kind of each time make sure you preen preen back a little bit here um, because you don't want to end up with a bunch of these fibers stuck around the eye of the hook um, trying to nip them with scissors and stuff so there's that um, I use my hackle pliers On the last step here and I just hold the hold the foxy brush straight up and down and I take all these fibers that would stand out like this get your fingers wet and you can kind of just preen them right back so they make a nice uh, uniform hackle for you which is really nice it, they do have a tendency of wanting to split themselves back up which is great that's why chose this fiber um, so that way at the end of the day of fishing you don't have what looks like a flat minnow out there um, no matter what it seems to always want to be pretty darn puffy don't uh, so on this part we're gonna wrap back forward you can just kind of wrap right over that estaz um, and don't worry too much about brushing it's gonna get hooked on the hook and stuff and kind of look look a little uh, freakish here for a minute you're just going to bring her back forward like I said don't worry too much about trying to straighten it all out just try to lay these on so you're not crossing any of the foxy uh, brushes over and then when you get up towards the front here in that last quarter to eighth of an inch try to use up whatever you have left of that foxy brush you want to try to build a little bulk there because that's what's going to make your fly kind of walk the dog for you and uh, and give it the really good pauses too this is not a thread head fly um, I, I personally can't stand seeing those big balls of thread on there I think that uh, a waste of waste of real estate so when you finish that guy off tie it in you'll still have a little bit of the wire you will have tied in some of the foxy fiber but that's not a, a big deal I use a little wire cutter cut it really close pull anything that you tied in just came out 
hold everything back really good just make sure everything is where you want it so we can get a, a whip finish on it on all of my flies I do a whip finish or any of them that I can I guess I do a whip finish and then I try to get uh, just about three wraps or so of super glue covered thread on there too. Three wraps ends up being about I don't know, half of an inch maybe. Four, I guess. Kind of blow on just to dry that real quick. Cut it off. This last part here, fly is done now. Uh, the last part here I do is I just try to hold all the flash and tail material and then I bring everything else forward real quick this will just kind of keep it get it looking perfect and then keep it looking perfect so when you look back in the box you're not just looking at a pile of flies here um, you just kind of give them all a couple of pulls back this foxy fiber has just a, a great ability not to tangle up around this hook like so many other uh, flies do. So it's, uh, it's really a great fly. This is the point here where you know you can add a stripe to it. You can come through with a marker and put put dashes down it. You can add eyes. It's really